tights this week, a couple of days. Just what's uh, your excitement level going in? It's a new season, really excited. I uh, can't wait. Um, probably most importantly to not play against our own um, team and get a chance to play against somebody else. I think the team's ready for that and we're excited. Can you, is there a way you can tell like the team's just finally like, all right, let's go, let's go face some other guys? Um, a way you can tell, it's a good question. No, 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 really, I don't think. I just think, you know, we've played so many scrimmage games now against each other. Um, if I'm tired of it, I know they're probably tired of it. Um, it's been great competition. I really like the depth of the ball club. I think there's a lot more depth on the pitcher's mound um, and throughout the field as well. There's good athleticism, some new um, faces definitely in the lineup um, because a lot of those guys from last year's ball club um, have moved on to pro ball. Um, but still, yeah, I like what we've seen so far. How much do you expect the competition level from scrimmages to emulate the competition level you're going to see this weekend? Well, that's a good question. I'm not sure. You know, you, you, you've watched a lot of tape on the three teams that you're going into play. You know, um, some of their uh, strengths and weaknesses from a year ago. Um, you see the recruits, and we're pretty familiar with the recruits that they have and the new guys that they have coming in and such. But you don't know, you know, how healthy everybody is and, you know, how guys have played and how guys are either getting better or not, you know, because that's a real factor in everybody's locker room. Um, traditionally, I know that you know, Skip Johnson's Oklahoma club is going to be well-trained. Skip's a good coach. You know, Tim Tadlock, he's a good coach at Texas Tech. Um, you know, Mitch Thompson, all three are, are friends of mine. I've known them for a lot of years. Their team should be very well prepared. They've had a lot of success in their career. So, um, you know, we expect a battle. What's the, what's the practice schedule look like this week? Uh, a lot of detail, uh, a lot of detail stuff that we're going to try to um, you know, anything that came out of our last weekend scrimmages that we needed to tighten up. Um, and then more or less the same routines that we uh, consistently do to try to um, just play fundamental. You guys have a pretty good understanding of what the lineup is going to be or are these last couple practices and the details that you're talking about, is that going to be the ultimate difference maker in what it looks like? I, we just haven't had our staff meetings on all that yet. We've had it in pieces, but not in whole. And that happens on Tuesday. Who are the guys who kind of caught your eyes during those last few scrimmages? Um, quite a few. You know, I kind of don't want to get too into the weeds uh, because I know how valuable information is out there uh, in terms of preparation. But I can say this much. There was um, there was a lot of really good performances over the last three days, um, you know, both offensively and on the pitcher's mound. Consistently, consistently, we've played good defense, which is always encouraging. Um, athletically in the outfield, it seems like we're able to run the ball down as we've been accustomed to seeing, um, which is great. Um, Overall, health-wise, um, we had, uh, for the most part, we're pretty healthy. We had some guys get limited in some things over the last weekend, um, just as a precautionary thing to where they can um, be at 100% for this coming week and the weekend. Other than winning, of course, what are some things that you're kind of looking for out of this weekend to make it a success, do you think? Um, we actually, you know, the winning is always awesome, right? Um, but we, we just focus on just improvement daily. And we really focus on, you know, just trying to teach you know, best effort every single day. And, you know, are, are you good with the job that you did from the start of the day all the way until you put your head on the pillow? Um, you know, did you nail every detail that you could have? And we're, we're teaching that. And um, it's a challenge, you know, for any of us in life to absolutely, when you wake up in the morning, all the way till the time that you lay your head on the pillow, have you nailed your day? And have you done everything you possibly could do to maximize yourself as a worker or a, or a family person or a teammate or whatever the categories are? Have you done that? And that's a hard thing to answer yes to. And if you could, you know, do it one day at a time, you know, it turns into one day equals two and then two equals a third and one day in a row for the entire season is really hard to do if you think about it as in terms of doing it for six months. But in terms of doing it for one day, it becomes manageable. And that's what we're trying to get them to do. Is that rotation part of the Tuesday meetings as well? Do you guys yeah. have an idea? Yeah. Just, uh, I'm going to talk to Cider later, but what have you seen from him over this, the fall and the spring? He's been consistent. You know, he's a consistent uh, pitcher. He's around the zone. You know, and I, and I think for the most part, you know, I don't know if our starting pitching is absolute um, lockdown starting pitching, but they're good. They, they can pitch. I didn't know that Robbie Alstrom was going to be a lockdown uh, starting pitcher. I I, I really had my doubts. I know back in 2012, we were wondering if Alex Cadell, I mean, he didn't sure look like a starting, you know, horse. And he wins back 12 pitcher of the year in the conference. Um, and so, 
you know, I like the option. Cider's a good option. R.J. Gordon's pitched exceptionally well. There's probably about four or five other guys that have pitched very, very well. Um, by frontline, absolute dominant starter that a guy's going to go out there and strike out like a, you know, a Bauer or a Cole back of the UCLA guys. You know, those guys were dominant, dominant arms. Or even at Arizona when I had Preston Gilmet um, that was pretty much winning Pac-12 Pitcher of the Week every single week and striking out somewhere between 12 and 16 guys a weekend. You know, do we have that? Time will tell. You know, I'm not real sure. I hope we do, you know, and it's exciting because the Siders and the Gordons and these guys that are competing and have been competing for starting spots throw the ball over the plate. They're really competitive, and and uh, and it's been nice to see. Is Mercado in that group of four or five guys, or what do you kind of see his role being this year? Good question. He's been really effective with everything that he's been doing. He's uh, been one of our better guys, and so I'm sure we'll see quite a bit of him. Uh, Coach, we're going to get to talk to Jeffrey here in a little bit, but um, what was the process like of getting him out of the portal, and what has he really brought to the outfield? Well, he's brought depth, and this, uh, you know, he's just like pretty much all the players, he's had his moments of good and his moments where you scratch your head. Lately, he's really developed. I mean, he's really, um, he's going to be a hot topic of discussion um, tomorrow in our meetings, for sure, because he's earned it. Um, unbelievable human being. What a kid. Like, just... And that's the thing you don't know, um, especially with Portal these days, at least in our game, you know, we, we're not, our game's not uh, like maybe some of the other games that are that are big on the nil and the money stuff out there. You know, our game's usually, not always, but usually if there's a guy that jumps in the Portal, there could be some, some real uh, baggage with that player. And so, boy, you got to really do your homework. No baggage on Jeffrey Hurd. The kid's a stud, a fantastic human being. He's been a great teammate. He works his tail off every single day. I've loved being around him. He's he's always very appreciative of what, as well uh, with everything. He's he's been a joy. What was when did he pop up on your radar? Was it after you know his performance in the Cal Ripken Summer League, or when he got up to the Cape, or or when did he pop up for you guys? No, I just every day we have a process where. Um, it's just we've got a staff that monitors the portal. And so for every name, no matter where they come from, we do thorough checks on any name that pops up. And so as soon as they pop up, we look into it and try to find as much information as we can to see if that's a somebody we should be recruiting or not. And he checked a lot of boxes, so we're on it. What's it's the back end of a bullpen competition look like going into this, this weekend? Uh, there's a lot of good names there, you know, um, a lot of good names. Um, you know, there's freshmen, guys that have great arms uh, from Cole Stokes uh, all the way through guys that are old, uh, j old junior college guys, Mikey Friend, uh, old, old portal guys. I mean, there's there's a lot of guys in that uh, back end that could jump into those slots. I think we're going to really be able, that'll be a strength of the ball club. We're, we're going to be able to shorten some games. Um, and so having a lead after five innings, six innings, um, I really like our chances with the options we have down there uh, in the back end. Last couple of years, you guys have had like a true closer, whether it's Malaris or Salt Summers earlier. Is that the same idea you're going to have this year, or is it going to be maybe more by committee? I don't love a committee deal. I, li I like a, a guy that knows that he's getting the ball in the seventh inning, the eighth inning, the ninth inning, and I think that's most settling is when you know you're going to pitch and you know that this is this is my inning or my time kind of thing, and you know going into it, like, like give me the lead, sixth inning is going to be this guy, and it's going to be scripted out pretty much every day. I think that's when they pitch and play the best. And so I'd like to, to get it to that point. Um, I think it's going to be the three weeks leading into the season, the, the Pac-12 season I'm talking about. The three weeks of prep beforehand is going to determine a lot of that. What are some of the characteristics that you like to see from either a setup guy or a closer out of the bullpen? What, what makes it a good closer? Hardest outs. They're the hardest outs in the game usually to get. You got to have a mentality. You got to pound the zone with strikes. Um, they got to be able to bounce back from failure because occasionally they're going to get you. Usually that closer, he's coming into a hairy spot, right? You know, it's probably a one-run lead or a two-run, three-run lead, and now that closer's in the game. And so, you know, a lot of uh, starters, shoot, they give up a run, two runs, three runs, it may be a great outing. And for a closer, uh, that may have just lost the game. And so those guys have to be resilient, mentally, really tough. And I think there's several guys this year um, that – uh, could easily slot into that that have fit that description so far from what we've seen. We talked to Drew, Drew Cali a few weeks back, and, and hmm. just kind of curious what you think he's improved most on throughout the offseason after a really good freshman Drew, year. Drew Smith. Uh, Drew Smith, sorry. Drew Smith. Cali, huh? yeah. I was going to say, right? habits. man, I get Cali back again? That'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, you're uh, no, Drew Smith, he's, you know, um, 
now with Sabine gone at third, um, you know, he's 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 got the nod over there. He's been doing a really good job. Him, Bennett Thompson, and Jacob Walsh, you know, assuming those guys are healthy and stuff like that, those guys are going to get and have earned the run uh, early on, right? Those guys have earned it from a year ago, and, uh, and they should get the longest rope to start the season. Drew's really been uh, known as a good defender his whole life. Um, and he's just offensively really developed and developed a lot. We saw that last year and a lot of big hits in the, in the Super Regional specifically. But great kid again, uh, team guy. Uh, he's, he's a good player. You talked about having both your corners on the infield and behind the dish kind of locked in there. Uh, how are you feeling up the middle on the infield? What, who's getting the best run there right now? Well, good options. You know, I mean, uh, Maddox Maloney, um, you know, him and, and Ryan Cooney from the freshman side of it have really jumped in and done a nice job. Um, you know, Carter Grotti, he returns along with Jack Brooks. Um, Carter played a lot last year until he got injured. And then, um, you know, somebody pretty much took his spot and ran with it when he was hurt, kind of Wally pipped him. Um, but, you know, those four guys are in the mix right there for those two spots and they've all played very well.